Uh, I am Raghavendran, bioinformatics mentor and research consultant with Omics Logic. Let me brief you about my, bio, uh, my background and research interests. So uh, I grew up to be a tinkerer kid who is interested in solving many problems. So right in my younger ages, uh, computers and programming with computers introduced me to very new puzzles and challenges. So attempting to solve these puzzles and these challenges were the first step uh, that took me towards solving puzzles and uh, asking questions. So during my undergrad education, I read about the potential and the announcement of the Human Genome Project. Uh, uh, that, um, yeah, uh, and, and that was the first research article that I read. I didn't understand it, most of it, but it, it inspired me uh, to a great deal and I uh, pursued my master's in bio biophysics. So my natural inclination towards computers and structural biology, bioinformatics, led me to specialization in computational biology and bioinformatics. So uh, after my master's in bioinformatics or biology, biophysics, I joined a PhD in Max Planck Institute uh, for biophysical chemistry uh, with a specialization in computation biology. So uh, during this tenure, I developed software and designed a lot of methodologies and pipelines for protein structural and dynamic studies. So my system of interest during this, uh, during the PhD period was proteins associated with neurodegenerative diseases. So uh, when, uh, at the time when the next gen sequencing technologies uh, were starting to get established in India, I came back to India as a postdoc to the Institute of Bioinformatics and Applied Biotechnology in Bangalore. Uh, the potential of the next gen sequencing technique and its application to multi-omics data analysis, these two combined and piqued my interest in cancer. So you all know uh, cancer is the leading cause of disease death worldwide. So uh, I got naturally inspired and uh, interested to work with cancer biology. So I contacted Professor Shandar Ahmed in JNU and Dr. Pedro Ballester in, in collaboration with Dr. Pedro Ballester in INSOM France. Uh, I proposed a study to understand and to uh, uh, explore tumor responses to different treatment regimes. So uh, this was while I was in Bangalore. And uh, I also agreed to help a friend uh, who was in need of uh, bioinformatics help in de novo genome assembly of a variety of neem plant. So it was only during this collaborative project I came to realize how little information was available for plant bioinformatics in the public repositories. While when you uh, take or when you compare it with the availability of databases and the repositories for human or bacteria, uh, there is hardly uh, anything for the plants. But there is so much potential to understand uh, plant genetics because through bioinformatics and through sequencing techniques, uh, we can understand the underlying biology of plant genetics because agricultural crops have been subjected to artificial selection for ages, irrespective of uh, geographical location and irrespective of culture. So uh, I, I continue to work with the project and, and they are writing up the paper and uh, I'm still associated with the uh, department to, uh, for some troubleshooting in, in the pipeline that I developed. Uh, so while, uh, while all this was going on, uh, the project that we proposed was successfully funded. And so I joined JNU as a postdoc research scientist. So uh, I will detail more about the data that I use for projects and, and about the project and the results in, uh, results in, uh, in, in a short. But uh, I just wanted to mention right from my PhD years, I enjoyed working with undergrad students and enjoyed working with students. So uh, this experience tremendously inspires me and I feel privileged to work with some of the bright young minds. So uh, I hope and I wish every one of you will enjoy working with me and as much as I look forward to working with you. So uh, for the next two slides or the next two slides, I want to move on to speak about the data that I use for the project on precision oncology. Let's see if I can get this rolling. Yes, okay, great. Uh, so every once in a while in, in science, a groundbreaking research gets published and the data collected for that work contain, contains a lot of potential to answer a wide variety of scientific questions and queries. So this is one such paper. Uh, and, and this paper is about tumor cells that are grafted into mouse models uh, to, uh, to study uh, tumor responses to different treatment regimes. So what they did was they extracted the tumor cells from cancer patients, and then they, uh, uh, they sequenced it. And from the sequence, they, um, uh, profiled the gene expression levels and the gene mutation levels and the copy number variation levels. And then these tumor cells are grafted into immunosuppressant mouse. So, and these mouse were administered different and uh, different set of treatment regimes. 
and 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 uh, and the tumor's response to these treatment regimes were studied. And such mouse or such immunosuppressant mouse, which got administered with uh, tumor grafts, are known as patient-derived xenografts. So these PDXs, in short, and they are administered sixty different treatments, and uh, and their response were recorded uh, in change in volume and the ability of the mouse to survive the disease. So such survival data analysis of one thousand seventy-five PDX mouse was released along with this data, along with the study. So this study from this analysis concludes that the mouse models provide a better alternative compared to the cell lines which were traditionally used because cell lines are often affected by the petri dishes they are grown on and uh, uh, heterogeneity is one of the biggest problem in cell line data uh, so far. And at the basic genomic level, compared to the cell lines, the genes, the, uh, the gene expression levels of the PDXs resemble more to the, uh, to the cancer patients than the cell line cell lines data. And, and PDXs are also consistent, or the uh, data from these PDXs are also consistent with extensively studied therapies. And uh, uh, this comparison validates their applicability to understand the underlying cancer biology. So such a wealth of data generates a plethora of research questions as I already posed. So one can employ this data to various analytical pipelines to study treatment stratification, like can the mutations in genomic uh, data predict tumor resistance or vice versa? Can tumor resistance uh, relate to uh, significant mutations in those uh, models? Or uh, uh, are combination of drugs more effective than single drugs? Or how, uh, how does different combinations of drug work well or does not work well together? Or can we find the underlying biology behind this? Uh, or we can also do some uh, precision medicine study like uh, uh, do targeted therapy exhibit higher efficacy than general cytotoxic treatments because among these 60 treatments some were uh, general cytotoxic treatments which are uh, toxic to all cells just they kill cancer cells more than the normal cells and uh, some are uh, some specifically target pathways inside the cancer cells so can we find out um, the underlying differences between these two treatments. And uh, with the help of multi-omics integration, <clears throat> can the PDXs broadly represent the interpatient diversity? Because that was one of the biggest conclusion of this study, where they observed uh, a diversity among the models which carry the same cancer cells uh, from different patients. So they, they translate into interpatient diversity. So can we quantify this diversity? Or more importantly, can we find the commonality among this diversity so that we can understand or we can use it for biomarker analysis? So these are different questions. And what it I use to the, uh, uh, I use this study to uh, work on. So uh, my aim was to use this PDX data to design and implement machine learning models to predict tumor responses to different treatment regimes. And why do we need to do that? So the efficacy or the effective of the cancer drugs is very strongly patient dependent. That is why we are moving more and more towards precision oncology and personalized medicine. Because on an average, only 25% of the cancer patients actually respond to cancer drugs. Mm. But unlike, uh, unlike uh, your normal painkillers, uh, you will have 80% of the patients responding positively to the painkillers. So currently there is a need to predict which patient will respond positively to the treatment. And if not, there is no need to spend time and energy uh, to uh, treat the patients with the treatment. So uh, for this study, one obviously cannot use uh, patient data uh, because, of, uh, because of the difficulty in the uniformity among the patient data, but we can actually use uh, these mouse model data to predict the treatment response. So how did I do that? The gene expression data, the copy number variation data, and the gene mutation data were the features from which the machine learning models defines a function to understand the tumor response. So when this model was presented a test case, it tries to predict the tumor response to the particular drug. So such a study, this, uh, this model was applied to breast cancer and colorectal cancer PDXs, which were treated for 26 different treatments. So what did we find? Uh, traditionally, canonically, single genes were used as biomarkers that predict the onset of cancer. And the same set of single genes were uh, used as a, uh, as a treatment biomarker also. 
For example, uh, if, if there is an association of a gene uh, to the onset of cancer, the same gene was uh, 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 studied whether this particular cancer will respond positively or negatively to any given treatment. This is obviously and uh, logically is not a very accurate predictor. So, the, uh, so this, this is not a very successful model, but uh, uh, from, uh, from a very, uh, uh, from the multi-omic data analysis, what we uh, demonstrate is the, uh, uh, before that I want to, uh, before that I want to introduce you to the accuracy measure that we are uh, measuring the treat, uh, measuring the machine learning models accuracy levels. So this is Matthew's correlation coefficient where an accuracy of one would mean the perfect accuracy, like all the test data are uh, perfectly uh, uh, um, identified or predicted to be uh, how it responded to the treatment. And minus one would be complete opposite. If there is a positive uh, response, the model predicts a negative uh, response. And around zero would be a random response. So what we want is these data points to move more and more towards one, so that we get better accuracy of our machine learning model. So uh, in that one, so when, when the machine learning model was uh, used, uh, used to predict on single gene markers, you see the accuracy is not very great. It's, it's, it's actually, yeah, uh, it's, it's very bad. So uh, when multi-gene models were introduced in place of single gene models, the accuracy is improved and uh, the accuracy level can further be improved by uh, combining or by including more than one uh, uh, profiles or more than one molecular profile like uh, uh, gene mutation data combined with uh, gene expression data combined with copy number variation data improves accuracy tremendously. So to quantify, we actually observed we could predict uh, 19 out of 26 uh, uh, treatment regimes. Uh, we could predict correctly 19 out of 26 treatment regimes. So uh, this was what we performed and what could be done, what could be done more in, in, in such a study. So one can extend such an analysis to include patient data from TCG repository, but that involves uh, extensive curation of the data, but one can still do it. Uh, a gene set enrichment analysis, like what Oja presented uh, of the biomarker genes will throw insight into the biology behind the response of these tumors to different treatment models. So uh, this is how we did. And uh, such a study was actually performed for selected cancer and for selected treatments. So one can obviously extend this study to all the cancer to find the commonality of these cancer cells to react to different treatment regimes. So these are the different uh, future uh, uh, steps that the team is currently working on. But uh, I finished my part and I joined Comics Logics. Um, so I hope this project was informative and it does inspire you to utilize curated PDX data. This curated PDX data will be available at the Omics Logics platform shortly. And this, um, yeah, this platform, as you are aware by now with uh, different uh, introduction from Elia and from uh, Harpreet and from Pranalika, provides a very well organized research fellowship program that I want to speak about in the next two slides. Uh, let me go to the next slide. So yes, so uh, from my research experience, there are three main challenges that all researchers will need to overcome in any research program. And this research program is designed to target specifically to address these. One, time. So a lot of time is actually spent on learning research methods from multiple sources with a varying level of reliability. But in the end, you are going to use only one or two methods for your question of interest. So what we have, the, the learning platform, the omics logic learning platform provides you with a very well planned learning modules and coursework. This coursework will prepare you for any challenges you might face with the data analysis and or the biological interpretation of your data analysis and your research question. And another big challenge in doing computational work or bioinformatics work is, is the presence of or, or is rather there is a limited access to bioinformatics expertise or a reduced availability to bioinformatics experts uh, for the students. So uh, with, uh, in this program, the research fellows will participate in cutting edge bioinformatics research led by mentors like me, uh, like Harpreet and several other uh, mentors you will find information on the website. Uh, 
we have years of expertise in computational biology, bioinformatics, and also including emerging domains like space omics. So this network of mentors that we have will provide you with expert feedback and peer review from the inception of your topic to the final results. And these results will be worthy to be sharing among the scientific community and to the world. And, and one final challenge is limited access to infrastructure uh, that is required to perform big data analysis. This is, I think this is the most important challenge that uh, many students face right now. So uh, the cloud-based analytical uh, Tauber bioinformatics platform that you are introduced to do today, it provides all the infrastructure that is necessary to perform big data analysis in an intuitive environment with the help of flexible, interactive, and visual pipelines. So the research fellows will get access to this platform and a list of curated public data sets with which you can design a big data analytics pipeline on multi-omics data, or one can perform translation research, or one can uh, address clinical questions, or biomarker identification, or treatment certification, or variety of questions that you can think about leveraging this data and infrastructure. So who can benefit from such a research fellowship program? So uh, this research fellowship program has been designed to help young research and students like you to gain access to the premium resources on bioinformatics for the analysis of complex high throughput data sets that I presented before. And uh, like Dr. Harpreet also presented and also we uh, observed from OJA also. So, and the experts will help you complete a research study on your own. So if you are an undergraduate or a master's student, you can actually engage in research and you can develop a deeper understanding of the subject matter than that is possible through, uh, through your classroom routines or classroom instructions alone. So such an early exposure to research has been proven to be very helpful and can, uh, can be the perfect launch pad for your career. You can also apply the skills. That is, that is, that is one of the most important points. You can apply all the skills practically, the skills that you learned from your uh, classroom instructions to a project of your own and to the project of your, uh, that piques your interest. And, and more um, documentation wise, you can fulfill the requirements set by your university, uh, set by your university syllabus or curriculum. So if you are a research student, so we provide, uh, you'll get an excellent opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with the network of mentors and to use the TBIO big data infrastructure to be part of your research question or to be an independent study to develop new skills that you are interested to, interested to do that. So we